I think that if I had to summarize it very briefly, just in a sentence, I mean, what is going on in the serial field nowadays, I would say that we are challenging paradigms, all kinds of paradigms. We are changing uh, paradigms in terms of uh, understanding much better about the biology of the disease and most likely in the near future, identifying within the so-called serial different entities. We are uh, being much better in treating patients with CLL. And as a matter of fact, the life expectancy of these patients has dramatically improved in the last decade. Chemoimmunotherapy is a consolidated concept in uh, treatment. And it did look like that chemotherapy would be, let's say, the gold standard for ages, and this is not the case. I mean, it's changing again. I mean, it's chemoimmunotherapy, obviously, is still the backbone for treating most patients with CLL. But now there is a lot of interest in uh, using small molecules, BCR signal inhibitors, new monoclonal antibodies, fascinating. Plus, as a result of that, the question comes uh, out as whether or not uh, all patients with uh, CLL should be treated with an intention to cure, or rather, we should make an attempt to uh, keep the disease in a kind of chronic phase. Because with uh, these new agents, which are really very, very good, they are non-toxic, most of them are just pills. Patients are extremely happy with that, no more IV, no more chemo no more side effects. Uh, these agents are extremely effective, but a curious effect is that the response is uh, not complete. I mean, most of these patients achieve a nice response, but it's a partial response. But the interesting concept is that many of the patients that achieved a partial response with these new agents many years ago, they continue in partial response with no progression. So I think it's uh, very good times and good news, particularly for patients uh, with CLL. A lot of interest, not only here, but also in uh, past meetings and in our coming meetings, I mean, new agents, new results. So I think that for those uh, who have, who have uh, a special interest in CLL, this is really a very exciting uh, days. very important thing that uh, we cannot forget is that the CLL is a disease of the elderly or the old people. Uh, the concept of the old people is changing, as you know, is quite dynamic. I mean, it's, uh, there are many individuals which are 70 or even older that they reject for very good reasons being called old patient, okay? But the vast majority of patients with CLL are, uh, is older or are older than 70. And these patients cannot be treated, most of them, with the standard chemoimmunotherapy regimens because of the bomanotoxicity, etc. So this is one of the added values of uh, all these new agents. I mean, because these agents are extremely well tolerated. Uh, I think which is amazing is that uh, the improvement in the general status of these patients is uh, immediate. I mean, some uh, patients call me the day after the starting therapy saying, doctor, I'm really getting much better than, so this is uh, really, uh, again, I mean, it's very, very, very good news, and it's a niche, I mean, for patients that uh, we couldn't treat in a sat satisfactory way in the past. To me, I mean, we are working within the, in Europe, I mean, within the umbrella of the national health system, and it is a little bit, I am, f sometimes I, I cannot help feeling upset when uh, the people uh, speaks about medicine in terms of cost. I mean, uh, to me, it's an investment. And uh, the economics of uh, health, I mean, uh, are extremely complicated. I mean, you cannot just consider how much do you have to pay, I mean, to get a kind of given therapy, but how this translates in the, uh, the normal life expectancy of the individual, the normal activity of the individual, paying taxes, etc. But again, I mean, you are completely right, and I think that uh, uh, we need, uh, we all, I mean, pharma, doctors, uh, academy, politicians, I mean, to, to reconsider, I mean, what we are going to do with th these, new, these new agents, that's, that's for sure. I think that this is a very good translation of uh, basic to the clinic. I mean, it's now, we know that the B-cell receptor 
uh, it plays a key role in the physiopathology of the disease. I mean, and everything revolves uh, around the, how a B cell receptor captures signals, and downstream these signals operate, the mutated, the unmutated forms of CLL. So finding out, I mean, agents that can interfere with this kind of uh, interaction, these downstream signals, I mean, is extremely promising. So uh, we shouldn't, uh, though, overrate uh, these agents because, I mean, these things are not uh, easy. I mean, these things eventually always become a little bit more complicated than anticipated. And in CLL, in contrast to other diseases, I mean, it's the, uh, the biology is really complex. I mean, all these signals, they have multiple pathways, and so you have to interfere at kind of different levels. So it is, uh, I mean, it's uh, something uh, realistic maybe to foresee in the future. I mean, uh, having a kind of cocktail of uh, a drug or different drugs that can interfere different critical pathways in CLL. B cell receptor is the most important one, but it's not the only one. Well, this must be defined in clinical trials. I think that uh, obviously outside clinical trials, I mean, I don't recommend using these agents. As a matter of fact, I don't recommend to treat any single patient with an hematological malignancy outside clinical trials because clinical trials uh, have uh, tremendous advantages. Number one, if you enter into a clinical trial, you have the guarantee that you are going to be extremely well treated under a number of conditions. Number two, you are going to get benefit from the newest things. And uh, number three, uh, I, and this is a, not a minor point, I am coming back to the economical issue. I mean, if you are really uh, covered, I mean, uh, because you uh, are participating into a clinical trial. And uh, finally, uh, it is always important to keep in mind that participating in a, into a clinical trial, that means a kind of solidarity in front of uh, uh, patients that will come after you and that uh, if you are getting a kind of uh, newer treatments which are much more effective than old therapies, is because there have been so many people participating in clinical trials. I think that this is something that we uh, have to explore because uh, uh, I already alluded to the fact that maybe the goal of the therapy in CLL, at least for some patients, will change. The goal is not getting rid of the disease, but to uh, keeping the disease under control. And if we accept this philosophy, uh, definitively one of the possibilities to be considered is a kind of sequential therapy in which you start and step by step you are using the different armamentarium, the different agents that you have, always with the same control, uh, uh, objective or goal of keeping the disease uh, under control. I mean, it's not to, uh, to uh, make the, the issue trivial, but I mean, it's uh, just to extrapolate this. Hopefully, uh, one day will come in which the situation will be similar to the situation with the people that has high cholesterol or high sugar in blood. I mean, it's uh, not, simple, not that simple as that, but I think that as a concept is valid. I mean, it's uh, trying and making an effort to transform a disease into a, a, a chronic condition. And uh, uh, being able to uh, say to the patient in many, many occasions, don't worry, don't worry, you are going to die with the disease, not because of the disease.